Okay, we took a little break. We're fresh, we're rejuvenated. Some of us had really hot salsa and is leaving a little bit of a lingering burn in our mouths. Um, I won't say who, but that person is me. <laughs> and now that we have introduced this, uh, this fifth character to sort of round out the party and to provide a compelling storytelling mechanic, uh, we have Ursula Grenoly, sister of Usawa Grenoly. <laughs> we have Paylor Malencast. I, I, uh, I did find a, a cool character art for him. Unfortunately, I don't have one for Abigail or Dura, so uh, we're going to have to use our mind's eye and, uh, and conjure something up. <clears throat> As players, we've colluded together, and we have now uh, approached our DM and said, all right, we want to play a game. These are the characters that we have. And uh, we want to, uh, we think we have a good balanced party, you know, we, we've, we've talked it out. And now as the DM, we've, uh, I've been given, or I guess I will say we, because now we're DMs, we've been given an, uh, an interesting set of circumstances to work around. Um, oh, I'm sorry, one second here. Sorry, this is rude. I have to take care of that real quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> here I'm concerned about yawning. Anyway, forget me. There are some things then that we have to consider as DMs. And in fact, I was thinking about it, Memory. Uh, you had brought up that uh, Dell had asked, is there a way to receive mechanical benefits from your backgrounds in a story? And Hermit, yes, provides something that's uh, very... Uh, that's that's ingrained, right? Because you get this discovery, and that becomes a hard story element. Um, however, if we look at other personality features, in fact, let's leave the Grenolies alone for a little bit. They, we've picked on them a lot. Let's go over to Dura. Her bond says, my honor is my life. Now, if I'm a DM and I'm writing these down, what I could do is say that uh, the player, um, let's say Perugia is playing Dura Shamraka, and remember to roll the R. If Perugia is stepping up as Dura and is doing something honorably when there's other choices, and it's role played through. You know, I do this for honor. I don't do this for anything else. As a DM, I would be inclined to give Perugia advantage on a role to pursue it because uh, he or she is acting in Dura's manner. So it would make uh, it would make that situation easier for Dura to accomplish. Conversely, if Dura is thinking about doing something dishonorable. I mean, there's the penalty of taking away Paladin powers as well as the DM, but I could impose disadvantage. Um, I I could do the same with uh, Dura's ideal, independence. When people follow order, uh, orders blindly, they embrace a kind of tyranny. That doesn't mean that Dura can't give orders to people, uh, but she she wants to make sure that she's understood. She explains them thoroughly. She gives people a, an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and so you have the overarching advantage disadvantage mechanic that you can play to. Some of this stuff can also be worked in, uh, not just by, uh, not just by the discovery, which is something you know big about the world or a grand pursuit. Look at something like military rank. By sheer virtue of having a player with military rank in the party, you as the DM have to consider, okay, so there is a military present. Who are they? What do they do? Where do they roam? Can my... Uh, do I want my PC, uh, my, my player, to have a dead background uh, feature 
or what can I do to make sure that they can at least get some use out of it? You know, with, with the understanding that, yeah, they might venture outside of the conquered lands or whatever, but how can it be used in some ways? And, and again, let's say that Dura uh, rolls up and she pulls rank on someone. Maybe you offer advantage. Something else here. We come back over to Paylor. Here we go. Ah, the bond. I have an ancient text that holds terrible secrets that must not fall into the wrong hands. This is a level one character who has a bond like this. Or if you're generating, you say, okay, everyone gen up a, a fifth level character. It's a starting attribute to the character that is forcing into existence this item, whatever this text is, um, to... Um, what is it? What what does it hold? Do you want to use this as a plot device? Because hopefully you're not just giving your players, you know, dead ends. Uh, in fact, I was going to talk about this uh, with a feat down here. Oh, where are we? Oh, we're already close by. It's not observant. Here we go. Keen mind. Uh isn't by default the best feat in my opinion because okay you get to increase your intelligence uh, by one that could be good um, you always know which way is north okay maybe but if you have a ranger or you know magic or other things that kind of falls by the wayside you always know the number of hours left before the next sunrise or sunset uh, maybe if you're in the underdark for extended periods of time and you don't want to throw off your sleep, uh, your sleep schedule, that might be good. So if you want this for a stat bump or, uh, I, you could go that route though. There's others that will give you the same stat bump though. The third point is really what the, the charm of this feat is, but this is something as a DM you have to consider. In fact, I almost thought about putting Keen Mind on Usula. It says you can accurately recall anything you have seen or heard within the past month. Now that is something that you as a DM, you don't have to record your sessions, but it's a meta, it's a meta knowledge gate that is installed into the brain of the PC. And that way, if they do want to recall something, and the player can say, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, we talked to someone, he was the guy in red robes, uh, and he said something about, uh, you know, a dragon. And then you as a DM say, oh, right, that's generally within the time frame, and then you can, you can reiterate it or go from there. So this can be very powerful if you can recall, if you have this eidetic memory, and you can recall anything you've seen or heard in the past month, that makes you a very powerful person. Especially given, you know, a game of espionage or politics or things along those lines. Um, and so that's something that you'd want to run by your DM as well. Um, oh, Memory says, I'm sorry, you meant backstory. He said he didn't see how a murdered family background story could play into the game mechanically. I explained to him that maybe the people who murdered his family in his background took a family heirloom, like a sword that gives plus two or plus three. Uh, yeah. That, that stuff, uh, I, I would agree with you there, Memory. Um, it, it could also give you... Um, it could give you advantage, even if it's not a hard mechanical ideal or personality trait. If you're doing something to pursue your goal, you could get advantage. Or your backstory could give you mechanical advantage in... Um, you know, the people of the town remembered your father who was a good man, and when you come back into town, they're willing to sell things to you cheaper, or something along those lines. So yeah, there's there's ways to work in uh, mechanical benefits. It comes down to how much accounting do you want to do. And that kind of falls on you as a player, right? You get this nice second page, allies and organizations, additional features and traits. And so if I as a DM tell you, yeah, anytime that you're in... Um, you know, you're in your hometown, I'll give you a 10% discount. I may forget because I have to juggle everything else in the world, but when you return to the homeland, 
um, you need to tell me as the DM, hey, I get 10% off when I go shopping here. And I'll go, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. And so then, I, you know, you can make that and then give me the receipt and we'll we'll do the accounting afterwards with that 10% uh, taken into consideration by you as the player for achieving that. If any of the rest of you have other questions, comments, or things that you've talked about with other people, too, um, please, uh, you're welcome to bring them up. All right. Let's get back along. Oh, hey, Game Masters Vault. Thank you for coming along the journey with us. Uh, stay a while, and uh, I'd say listen, but I might owe someone money if I complete that phrase. Uh, we're going to be building a story with the characters that we mostly randomly generated throughout the week leading up to today. All right, so we made our party. We have five people in it. Uh, the baby of the party here is going to be Dura because she is only level six. Though we have a bit of a hard cap here because Ursula, spoilers, is not making it past level nine at the latest. And so we have this one adventure together with everyone, uh, you know, or, or we could put a couple between six and eight, nine at the most. We've gone through and talked about ways that we can <laughs> that we can uh, split up our uh, that we can split up our party. We can do it by skills, by abilities. Um, but now, now we're DMs and we know this stuff about our characters. We've talked about personalities and ideals and things along these lines. And in fact, we're even taking into consideration that the person who's running Ursula says, "I would like her to. I would like her to die." at some point in the game. And I want it to be meaningful and serve a point and, and go from there. And so, oh, we have a bit of a, kind of an emotional speed bump that we need to build to, hit, and then, you know, survive it afterwards. <clears throat> so by this point, we need to start bringing everyone together, right? There always has to be a hook of some kind. It sounds like, uh, because of their military careers, um, Dura and Abigail already know each other. Uh, they both served in the same army, or under the same lord. We'll just say under same banner. And are out traveling uh, on a mission of some kind. And we'll say because uh, they're traveling under the military banner, Dura, and, and now we're, we're spotlighting, uh, focused on these two characters as we're introducing, Dura has the spotlight for her background because she can pull her military rank in these lands. Abigail doesn't necessarily have the military rank, but she's the folk hero in her hometown, which is where this is going to pick up. So they served under the same banner, traveling under a mission, um... And both get, uh, both get background stuff in Abby's homeland. So we have a military that's present and we have to think, okay, what's happening? What's happening in the world around us? Well, we do have the Grenolese who were evicted from their lands because of a, a, some sort of conflict or battle or force. So it sounds like maybe Dur and Abigail were on a different front of this war, but they're aware of this force. And while they have returned in their own ways to bask in the glory... Oh, I'm sorry, Memory, you, you brought something up. Any details of any kind that you may not even see in a character's backstory a DM can play off of. Never put anything past a DM because they might just do so even when you weren't expecting it. That is very true and good words of wisdom. Thank you. Uh, so then we have the Grenolies. Uh, we're going to introduce slash hook the Grenolies. And they are going to travel to Abby's hometown. He's a trapper by background. And she's keeping up and she wants to be a part of the adventures. We have already gone through their level... Uh, they're like level one through five or six, right? So they've already had their initial run-in with this evil force. And now they're in this, it's their big moment together. Uh, that You know, she's healthy. So the, the characters, um, 
if, if uh, memory you were playing Dura and then uh, Perugia was playing Abigail, you would then meet, uh, you would then meet uh, Seo and uh, Game Master, who come in as Ursula and Usawa. And in character, you would have no idea that you know she's sickly, right? Because she can keep up. She's she's frail, but she's with this hale and hearty, uh, you know, this guy. And then we end up showcasing their backgrounds because he is a whoop wrong character. He is this outlander trapper, and she's this uh, hermit who's kind of reclusive, and that that will play into some of this other stuff that she has down here. So now we have four characters together. And this could be our first session, or it could take a couple sessions. And everyone's just sort of going along doing their own thing. Uh, they bond due to the ability to speak of the... Uh, <laughs> insert evil here. Happening in the lands. And Abby's... Uh, ability to share... Stories about her own brother with Usawa. And then meanwhile, you have, uh, while well, Usawa is not a soldier by trade, uh, Dura and he can still swap tales about, yeah, you know, we were, we we're frontline fighters and battling and this sort of stuff happened. Now we have four characters together. Well, in comes Paylor. Who, yes, we have him statted out as a level 13 character, if any of you are just here. The levels and the ultimate abilities aren't really mattering. We're just going off of conceptually who they are as characters and the general gist of their abilities, uh, of their ability uh, proficiencies and scores. And it seems that uh, he is in town because he's pursuing some kind of a treasure. He's really easy to work in as a character. As a, as a treasure hunter, as this, like, Indiana Jones-style rogue, he can be a loner, he can travel, he's very flexible. Pardon. Which is good, because having characters with flexibility helps. Um, it's very difficult to have tight-knit gears always grinding in a DD and d game. Um, you, you need a little bit of, uh, a, a little bit of, uh... Uh, Game Master says those defining events listed are those from the players as a part of their backstory or something you added. A little bit of both, uh, Game Master. Abigail, Dura, and Paylor were all randomly generated. Everything about them, um, their personality traits, all this stuff was randomly generated. And then we used uh, uh, storytelling and uh, plot putty to fill in gaps and bridge things. Usawa came about because someone wanted to see what would a barbarian wizard look like since they're so diametrically opposed. And I took up the challenge and built this based on his specifications. And part of that then uh, incidentally generated a sister. And then today I generated the sister and presented it in the first part of the broadcast for base statistics because we're going to build a party. Um, but because he's level 20, well, we're not going to have a level 20 roll around with a level 6. So what I did was, is I went through and I said, well, if he's lived 20, you know, 20 levels of adventure, if we're writing this as a campaign or a novel around him as a central character, every level should uh, feature some sort of a theme of the story, something that changes. And so we're hitting the sweet spot right about here before, um, <clears throat> spoiler alert, uh, this happens, which sends him into a slump and then, bada boom, he picks up his necromancy powers and things pursue from there. And it just so happens... It just so happens that randomly generated Paylor Malincast right here is a bond. I have a text that holds terrible secrets that must not fall into the wrong hands. So Paylor comes into town seeking info, relic, or even just a rest. He has this book with him at character creation. Uh, in fact, this book if we really want to tie people together, because now we have two people who have fought against this evil, we have two people who've run against the evil, we can even say that this book contains knowledge of the evil. And maybe, even though he's a PC, he is actually a quest giver, in so much that he says, um, you know, 
we need to infiltrate this um, ruin. <laughs> we need to infiltrate this ruin uh, to recover X before bad guys do. Who's with me? Statistically, by level, we want them all about the same. But that doesn't mean that he can't be 40 years old instead of his 55 here at a, at a lower level. He So by age, we're kind of all as players consenting, okay, he's, he's kind of the party leader in this regard, right? He's the quest giver. He's older. He knows more, even if statistically his, uh, his ability score isn't the highest, that kind of a thing. Perugia says you could use his motivation to avenge your family. They could have taken an artifact from the family. It could be a tie-in for the criminal connection, family owed money, or some traits of your character. Always double check locks and windows, has trouble sleeping after an ambush. Backstory can also add a new perk. Uh, talk to the DM. My uncle always showed me how to find food in the wild so your soldier could have the survival skill uh, proficiency uh, to choose from. Uh, and uh, Game Master said, thought it was a chart, a site, or something. I hadn't heard. Oh, uh, oh, okay, uh, you mean, uh, what Plot Putty is? Uh, if that's what you're talking about, I'm sorry, there's a bit of a delay, but I want to make sure we're keeping the conversation going. Uh, so Plot Putty is just that. It fills in gaps, right? It kind of makes things smooth. Um, it's like using, uh, wood filler, if you, you know, if you get that as a carpentry reference, or, you know, if you're welding something and you make the, the bead of the weld smooth to the pipes that you're welding. So, you know, there's not a ridge. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just, okay, you just hadn't heard that. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, we all we all have uh, developed different and interesting uh, lingo and terminology. So feel free to, uh, you know, if you have your own words for situations or characters or whatever, you can share it in here. Uh, this is a talk show of kind of effectively. This is us sitting around a table as if we were all actually just sitting around a table, you know, kind of BSing and having fun talking about our our tales of war and suspense and mystery uh, that may never have actually happened, but we can describe with all the detail of the summer blockbuster multi, you know, $11 billion movie. All right, so bada boom, here we go. We got five characters together. It's all nice and organic too. Um, there is a little bit of suspension of disbelief that the players have to have on behalf of the DM. The DM should make an attempt at, uh, you know, at baiting a hook really well, uh, but cut your DM a little bit of slack, especially if she or he is new. <laughs> They're trying. <laughs> yeah, you just call them links. Social links, social links, social links. Okay, so now we are on... Uh, by this point, in that we're, we're freeform thinking. I haven't pre-plotted this out, and you all in the chat can come up with ideas too that could even replace mine. I'm open-minded to that. This isn't my story. This is our story. Uh, so, Paler is the de facto, de facto leader whoop, of the group. This is going to kind of put an intrinsic spotlight on the decisions and direction that that player is going to have. So that's the constant always on. Now we want to make sure that we can feature other players to do important things. Paylor may be able to get through dungeons pretty well, but does he know the countryside? Probably not as good as Abigail, uh, right? Because this is her homeland. Or even someone like Usawa, because he's taken the Outlander background, uh, it's difficult for him to get lost. And so while he may not be native here, maybe these two, which could be unlikely characters, especially because Abigail has a rivalry with her brother, and this is a brother-type character, um, this then puts a uh, spotlight on Usa and Abby to navigate to the site, right? Because uh, Usala is going to provide healing and support as a bard. We're talking broadly. And Dura is, uh, by this point, you know, she's reactive. She's a caster. She's a defender and a healer. She's not really a proactive treasure hunter. 
So she's she's riding shotgun right now, or she's like riding in the back seat, enjoying it. And at the first sign of danger, she'll spring up. So we don't want to forget about her, but right now she's not the spotlight character. And through here, we can have uh, skill challenges. I would suggest as a DM, because we have our DM caps on right now that look like headphones, by the way. Um, but I promise this is a DM cap. Uh, I would have one or two fights. You don't have to try and slaughter your party. <laughs> you know, uh, something that might bust their lip a little bit. But you need to give your players an opportunity to get to know their characters and to become comfortable with each other. Because we each have our own concepts, and we're like, oh yeah, I, I, I bought all these, I got all these spells, and I'll use them in these circumstances. Well, did the player remember to use those spells in those circumstances, or were the circumstances never evident? So you need to give them a little bit of a warm-up. You know, this is meta-knowledge and meta-speaking as presenting a story or campaign. This allows the group to congeal talents and personalities if you get a good in joke among your party from the first couple fights you have done a good job <laughs> um and also a fight uh so, so now we have the two navigators uh we have ultimately the the, the in the background we have paylor then the, the navigating in the mid-ground is Abigail and Usawa. And then in the foreground, we have Dura, uh, who is, you know, the, the active fighter. And maybe to an effect, Usula. Not that she's uh, not effective, uh, because, you know, she, she's a, a caster and she can offer support. So those two are in the foreground. So there's roles and there's layers to this, right? Just like a painting, you paint in layers. Uh, whether it's uh, in, you know, on a canvas or in a digital format of some kind. So, they get to the site. And then this is where... Uh, this is where Paylor becomes the active player. Right? He's the treasure hunter. He's the dungeon delver. He's the one who will try and trigger traps. Uh, you know... Uh, Usawa will see the pile of dates and try and flick one into his mouth, and and Paylor will grab it and say, "Bad dates." <laughs> uh, game says, "Could you scroll the character sheet to show the defining events?" Uh, curious to read those. I have a ton of five e books. Okay, yep, no problem. I can probably make this just a tad bigger for you here. We'll do that. And then we're primary. You can look at all of his story if you want, because you're going to see the ultimate direction that this campaign is going to go. What we're doing now is we're building characters really like maybe four to nine, five to eight, somewhere in there. But look at the highlighted area primarily for what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, because you, you have the gist of the other characters. I have them loaded up, though, so if you do want me to tab over to them, let me know, and I can I can show you what is going on with them. No problem, games. I, I appreciate you being a part of the chat and interacting. Uh, okay, so we get to the site. Paylor's active, and then uh, this is going to put Dura and Usula uh, in, in, like, the mid-tier, right? Because he, uh, we have the one in the foreground. You could argue... You could argue strongly that Usawa could also be frontline in this because barbarians and rogues are both very good at addressing traps just in two different ways. <laughs> but in role-playing wise, the sister's probably not going to want the brother to just run ahead and uh, trigger all the darts to, you know, <laughs> go into him so that no one else takes him. So he just flexes him out because uh, she'll probably be uh, a little uh, a little angry at him for doing that. Uh, but So this is going to have Dura and Usua in this uh, mid-roll, right? Because they're ready for trouble, they're ready for combat. Meaning then that um, Abigail and... Uh, ba -ba -da -da. Uh, Abigail and Usua. Abby and Usa. Wait.
Sorry. I was I just even having a lecture about having names that were too close to each other here. Usula is the sister. Usawa is the brother. Uh, so they're in the background here because this isn't necessarily their element. Maybe in some ways you could throw in skill challenges um, or something that's a good uh, meta way to get your players to think is a riddle. Uh, you, you can say to your, as a DM to players, yes, this is a riddle. Use your own brains. Do not use your phones for Google. But I will give you hints based on, like, I'll, I'll give everyone one free hint, and you can roll it through your character. So if you think that you, uh, that we're talking about the moon, um, as a player... You can ask your character to roll nature or arcana or something you think is related. And if you pass my arbitrary, you know, DC challenge, I will give you a free hint. Now, after you've had your free hint, I will then penalize the party, maybe in some karmic way or by giving disadvantage on the next something or another, um, by needing all these extra hints past the first. So it encourages your players to think and to share knowledge. It can still be done through the layer of, uh, you know, through the mask of their player character, and it encourages active role playing and table talk at the same time. So you, as the DM, can just sit back and say, ha, 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 "Yes, I've done it. I've threaded the needle of the perfect interaction." Uh, let's see. Game Master says, "I'm thinking those would be a great way to list some events for character arcs and not so much backstory." Uh. Yeah, it's, as it was up here, this was just typing out thoughts. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be in character backstory itself. I, as, a, as a level 20 character, I guess ultimately all of this is technically behind him. Um, but in the way that I've been presenting things, it was just a convenient way to have this on screen for us to use as reference points. <clears throat> I appreciate the suggestion, though, Games Master Vault. Perugia says, true, uh, she may. They have a hate-hate relationship. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Um, uh oh Oh, snap. Del Corn is here. All right, everyone, hide. Stream's over. <laughs> All right, so... As a DM, then, DM goal, party gets the thing, party bonds, set up for a bigger conflict. We got that. You're going to duel me for zero experience points, Dell? I will deny, I will deny zero. <laughs> you got to put something up uh, more than just zero for that. Perugia says you can take credit for the crazy overthinking the PC will come up with. Uh, what if it means this, DM? Haha, <laughs> you guys, yeah. Um, there are times where your PCs will purposely or accidentally betray something that interests them, and you as a DM say, that's a really good idea. That's better than what I had. And so you say, yeah, ha, ha you found me. <laughs> How did you guys know? It's like you're you've been playing D and D for years, and everything made sense. And yes, yes, it was me the whole time. You know the DM's always the villain if you think about it. Uh, okay, uh, if you need that back again, uh, game master, I'll I'll keep that up for you. All right, so. This is, uh, this is done, and whatever the end boss of the dungeon is, again, we're speaking in meta terms, is not going to have an effect on the global happenings, uh, whatever this evil force is that brought everyone together conceptually, but is still out there and is, uh, and is um, uh, you know, this physical manifestation. And so here we have kind of this, uh, that would be in the, in the core storyline that we're weaving around, this could be their big moment together. Uh, you know, little did the other party members know that they've gone through all of this uh, together, you know, surviving, um, you know, trying to just uh, get by. They have their big moment. They, you know, they get the MacGuffin from the temple and uh, they can even do that well ahead of before the evil force is set to descend upon here. 
Oh, Delcorn says, well, yeah, it's a duel for honor. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> well, the DM does pay up, play all the monsters and villains. Yeah, we do. And we're also every happy little tree and happy little mountain and, <laughs> and all that. Bubonic one, welcome. Yes, the MacGuffin. Uh, though in this case, the MacGuffin uh, is probably already held by, uh, by Paylor. Uh, in the form of the book, at least the MacGuffin for Usawa here. All right, so they have this item, and it could be a magic sword or something that uh, something that could be useful to the party, right? As long as the bad guys don't have it, what's to say that they that they don't need it uh, for something else? Or they even run into that whole, uh, you know, we'll use Indiana Jones, right? He gets the idol out of the temple, and sure enough, there's the Nazis saying, "Hey, give us the stuff, or some bad things is going to happen." Uh, and so they have to give it up. Would it, whichever direction you want to go, hey, I'm, I'm throwing out plot strings for you, and, and you can take them in those directions, but let's at least, you know, get the strings out there. Oh, yeah, there is a, there's a bit of a, a cooldown on that, Delcorin. Though I'll remember the next time you forget to add points that it'll, we'll be dueling for honor. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so this is their big moment together. Now, we as a DM know that we had a player make a request that she wanted to run this impactful character, and we need to build to, we've had this high, and now we need to have something happen that she starts getting sick again, you know, discreetly. That's also why we built her to have expertise in deception and a flaw like, I like keeping secrets and I won't share them with anyone, even her brother with whom she shares this bond. And that's also why we built her with an 8-con. <laughs> I'm number one, yes. Uh, although, in, in fairness, that's because when I was experimenting with the bot, I was, a, I was a big old cheaty face, and I just... I randomly gave myself, like, 5,000 points or something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I'll do it again, too, if I had the chance. So now we need to set up a fall of some kind. Uh, we had a victory. Everyone should be bonded together. Yeah, you already have an in joke. Everyone's comfortable fighting and role playing. Uh, they head back to Abby's uh, village, uh, which, by the way, uh, Del, uh, while you're not here, um, Abigail was able to uh, talk with Ursula uh, about the uh, the benefits and drawbacks about having a brother. And, uh, and so that conversation has been had. And apparently as we're stomping around in the hometown, uh, you are, you know, this, this meta character that we had in the conversation earlier in the week, he's not a part of the adventure necessarily, but, uh, he's drawn in through this, uh, fun, you know, incidental stuff. Um, so he can, he can have a, a say in things before they all go off again. Uh, so anyway, they head back to the, uh, to the village. All of their goals are complete, right? Uh, the, the one the, the siblings traded furs and they're technically free. Uh, Paylor got the MacGuffin and he's the explorer. And then you have Abigail and Dura who've completed their military mission back at the hometown. What's to keep them together? Aha! So we do need an external force of some kind to pers uh, to have them pursue this, and that could be even something like. Uh, Del, what if you as the brother of Abigail uh, were, were kidnapped? Now, Abby may be a psycho to you, but... Uh, oh my. I don't... <laughs> Did you wake up a computer? What was that? I don't know if you all heard it, the, the big doo 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 but I, I think the cat might have woken up the computer. Well, that's what you get. Okay. Oh, jeez. Random encounters, right? Uh, Delcorn says, 20 GP to the person that captures Abigail and throws her into a deep well. Uh, so so we have some external... Uh, uh, da -da -da. Everyone's job is... Complete. But then, uh, something happens, and, um, I oh know I hope the cat doesn't, yeah. 
Remember that on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. Nobody. Uh, okay, so we have a but then moment. And now, as DMs, we have to apply um, an external bond. We, we had the short-term task. Everyone's like, yeah, we're all kind of going this direction anyway. We're getting along for personal reasons. Something happens. This evil force passes by. There's a kidnapping. Maybe that, that MacGuffin that you worked so hard to get through the temple is taken from you in some way. Um, or we could even have it be an internal force, but one that is very strong. As we want to introduce the, the fall... Uh, you know, to start the fall of Usula's health, it could be that uh, that uh, Usula falls ill, and then you have in this party you have Dura, who is a healer, and uh, she might have. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for at forty nine. She might have some kind of uh, matronly instincts as a healer, maybe as a mother herself or something, to want to uh, find a medicine. And her brother might begrudgingly say, yeah, she's been sick. And, and so now we're, we're redrawing everyone back in. And then we have Abigail, who doesn't really have anything better to do right now. And ooh, Squirrel, uh, <laughs> as, as a kind of a personality, she might want to join in and say, no, 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 what... You know, I've seen you fight. You're strong. You have this. You have to be better than your brother, just like I'm better than mine at all points in time. <laughs> and so then you have uh, you have an ailing person. Her brother's obviously going to dote on her. And then we have Dura and Abigail, who uh, who are going to uh, come along with this. This would leave Paylor. Does. Paylor doesn't have the artifact back in order to return, since that was his goal the entire time. If it was if it was taken, and then we can sort of pineapple pen the two. Maybe in the course of this artifact being um, taken, we shine a spotlight on Ursula, who was maybe the one protecting it. Right? She still she has this Superman syndrome going on. There was a tussle, and she overextended herself. The artifact was taken. She got sick. Well, Paylor's intrinsically invested in this, too, because while the others want Ursula to be better, he wants his artifact back. Remember, he's lawful neutral. It's not that he doesn't care about her, but he has a job that he needs to do, and it seems that the party can continue on from here. Ursula falls ill. MacGuffin goes bye-bye. This is an external bond to keep the group together along backgrounds and personalities. Remember, you want to offer your players as many chances to be themselves as their characters as possible. This then... You should not want to attempt to split the party, and I think we have a strong unifying force. So instead, you might want to do something that's along the way. For instance, they receive some uh, intel that the force that stole the item is in X Swamp. X Swamp also has the rare flower that suppresses nope, I misspelled that Ursula's symptoms everyone's still together the biology and ecology of monsters and plants and villagers and countryside and political boundaries and everything is still there we then have another overland adventure and in, now we're moving out of Abigail's homeland and maybe even Dura's. So now they're kind of in untr uh, untrodden or uncomfortable territory. And now we're getting uh, in Paylor's neutral. And now we're shining the spotlight on the on the two siblings, on Usawa and Usula. Because this is more where they're at home in the wilds and they can navigate. So we're shifting momentum. It's like a pendulum going back and forth as my squeaky chair does. 
Um, so we have skill challenge, we have, we have combat along the way, maybe they pass through a village. All the while, we're allowing Usula's player to get sick a little bit more and a little bit more. So that there's this, there's this countdown timer, right? There's this pressure that the other players feel, especially if they don't know that we've colluded with the player beforehand to bump her off. Now, so we have some dueling going on, and uh, Delcorin pulled the throne from the deck of many things. Um, <laughs> you don't think losing the level of intelligence was worth it? <laughs> uh, so it seems like maybe that uh, that Twitch emote was the was the proper one. Okay, so now we come into an. Our second dungeon, our second, you know, little uh, contained adventure. This time, instead of featuring uh, Paylor, because it's not like a trap temple and whatnot, this this should be something that you should leave to... Um, you should give the spotlight now maybe to Dura and Abigail. Maybe there are... Uh, it, it was an old cult temple. And uh, they summon demons or other otherworldly beings. Well, this is Abigail's bread and butter because she is, uh, you know, she's nuttier than squirrel poop. And the Arcana stuff is absolutely what she gets into. Also, Dura, being partial paladin, as well as having these wild magic powers, it allows her to kind of act freely in that in that place to confront evil and get so worked up that you're allowing the player to not have to be the lawful good for those brief moments of time because either they're they're channeling the sorcerer slots through paladin to mechanically smite 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 blow up with holy power it could be undead also um or um they can use these magics in this strange place that you're describing maybe suppresses holy stuff. And so you're offering that player a chance to explore her duality as a uh, as a paladin and sorcerer. You can, you can offer a soft nerf to her paladin side and then maybe shift a, a boon over to her paladin and let her ride that throughout this dungeon as well. And now you've spotlighted those characters. Paylor's kind of neutral in this. Like There could always be a trap or there could always be a lock to pick along the way. But, uh, you know, he's interested in this, but he's not... This isn't the dungeon he, he pre-explored. And then you have good backup here, because Usawa's always ready for trouble as a barbarian, and will jump into it. And Usula's reactive, because she's the healer and the support caster anyway. So the spotlight shifts in a different kind of dungeon... Make sure it focuses on others' talents. Uh, Perugia likes that idea. Wh which one in particular? Unfortunately, due the uh, due to the delay and everyone talking about different things, uh, including myself, because uh, ooh squirrel, uh, I I may have lost what you were referencing. Fool told me to draw again, then idiot told me to draw again. Int is 13, haven't rolled yet. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. <laughs> oh, dum, 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 dum. <laughs> oh, the cut magic power. Yeah, so you can you can just shift it rather easily. They both cast off the same stat, so I'm sure you could work with a player and say, look, I'm going to nerf your paladin stuff here because there's some, like... E Right, this is the big bad evil whatever, it, or it's not the one, but maybe an agent, right? Because we have to come up to the conflict uh, that the the brother's going to have that he's going to lose his sister here soon, and it, it's unhallowed ground or it suppresses the paladin part. So while effects of paladins are reduced by I don't know, uh, are are at disadvantage. You could even just keep it simple. Paladin stuff is disadvantage. Sorcerer stuff is is at advantage. You work it out that way. As a DM, I will stress that closing doors is an important part of the job. Keep an open mind to allow for a window to be opened. Or to say, no, the easy route I'm going to block, comma, but I will be open to creative thinking. That is a mark of a good DM in uh, IMHO. <laughs> 
Wow, hey, Memory, good roll in the D100. You got a nice 19. <laughs> and if you close a window, open a vent. <laughs> okay, so they make it through, uh, we'll just call it like the, uh, the Haunted Swamp Keep. Recover the item. But then, again... Because now, when we come back over, right, everyone's kind of ding. They hit that milestone. They had their big moment. She gets sick again. This is kind of going on in the background. The disaster's revisited, right? They find that it's not just, you know, the peasantry that has been talking about the, the keep being haunted. This is where the sub-boss of evil is living. And the disaster is revisited because they discover that this evil has actually been using this place as a foothold in the countryside. The evil isn't necessarily defeated. In fact, the heroes uh, might have recovered the item but had to scamper out. Or they only drove off and this mid-boss evil uh, vows to come back again. And uh, because that is going to be early... This is going to be in like the 11 to 15 that that mid-boss is going to get taken out to then set up for the big boss at the end of the campaign. That's beyond what we're doing tonight, but hey, we could always go back and revisit it. Uh, however, uh, but then... The exertion is too much for oops, Ursula, and she falls. Everyone gasps. You have Paylor then, who's, if he's playing his character, lawful neutral. He has the item back, and again, it's not that he doesn't feel for her, but he says, um, I have what I need. Um... The others are, are feeling, you know, mixed emotions. Maybe some of them, maybe Abigail's, uh, she's concerned about Ursula, but she says, wow, this keep that's, uh, you know, this keep on the borderlands or something uh, is close to my homeland. I need to, you know, I, I should tell them I'm really worried about my people. Uh, Dura might be worried about uh, not her people, but herself, because my, my magic went wild in there. What was, am I losing control? So we have an external conflict, like a selfless external conflict. We have an internal conflict. Paylor is not necessarily in conflict because as far as he's concerned, he's satisfied. Usawa has an external internal conflict in the fact that he cares for his sister who's now like not doing too well. And Usula has a purely internal conflict with all of this. And now she, th you know, she's facing the end. She had her high, her Superman syndrome, and this last thing, yeah, they, they drove off this evil thing, and this was the taskmaster that put their tribe or her parents to the sword or to the whip or whatever, uh, and they, they drove them off so she can, you know, kind of die happy, like, I did it, you know, I was here beside you, but sorry, brother, <laughs> I, I pushed too much and I'm, I'm gonna die, and, uh, and, and so then we've made this, uh, this, this moment of flux. And it's, uh, it's then here that we need to make some decisions as a DM. Um, we can then overland back to, uh, we'll say towards, because we need to keep it interesting, right? We're storytellers. We'll go towards Abby's town. But Dura's unit passes by with troubling news. They find her unit, so now the spotlight is shining on her, and she needs to make a decision, which is going to jar her out of this personal conflict of, ah, oh, paladin, ah, oh, wild magic sorcerer, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and we learn that evil is afoot, and you can tell them, well, no, duh, they were just in this keep over there, and they go, oh, no. And, and we have this uh, back and forth, and they say, well... Uh, Dura, we need you. Can you come along? And uh, and then there's the, oh, well, Usul is sick. And they say, we have a med wagon. Put her in the back. All of you uh, come along. We, uh, If you want to put these people down, this is the chance to strike. Um, and that is giving compelling reasons. You have a little bit more overland travel, maybe some skill checks. This is allowing these kind of final moments to build between the brother and sister. Abigail's kind of happy, you know, she's recognized as a folk hero still. Dura's in, in commandish here, and uh, Paylor's along because 
Maybe, maybe he's having a moral conundrum. I have the thing that I want. But there are people now that I, like, I care about these people. I mean, maybe not super deeply because he hasn't known them all his life. But now he's weighing, you know, materialism versus empathy. You know, and he's, he goes, I'm getting older. You know, if, if I was younger, I would just take this thing back to the museum and I would leave. But these are kids. Uh, at this point in time, it's like, I think I have Ursula. Uh, she's like 14 or 15. And her brother's only like two years older. We have kids here. You know, and then we have uh, this army. I'm getting older. In fact, maybe I can even put this to use. And he might even def uh, develop a rapport uh, with Usawa. Because in this five-person party, Paylor and Usawa are the only two guys. And so they could develop uh, some kind of a rapport with each other. You know, I wouldn't call it a bromance or anything. But if the girls can get together and, you know, and what, what, eat, eat popcorn, have pillow fights, and uh, talk about uh, Morgan Freeman, or what was uh, Stewie's line from Family Guy? Uh, you know, Paylor can say, look, you're going, through th uh, you're going through some things. You know, pull them off to the side. So you have you have a spotlight on these two, right? Uh, the girls kind of go off to the stage. Everything's dark, kachunk, and the spotlight shines on the two. And so Paylor, you know this this older man, right? Uh, he'd be in his like mid forties or so at this point in time. You know, clasps Usawa <laughs> probably up on the shoulder and says, "Look, I have a book, and it gets into things that are not so pleasant. However." Given your circumstances, and from what I know about you, you seem to be a man who's open to options. I think things are only going to get grimmer for you and your sister, and especially your sister from here on out. Though all might not be lost. There could be a way in this book to bring her back to health. But... I'm not sure at what cost. Even I don't fully comprehend it just yet. Now, because we as players know that we're building a barbarian wizard, he's not a dummy. I think I gend him as a 14 intelligence starting out at level 1. So he's not, you know, me dumb cronk go smash. He would want to figure it, figure this out and pursue it on the side. And he's probably kind of upset that his sister... Um, was lying about her health the whole time. So, of course, the logical thing to do is lie about trying to find a cure for her. Um, unit passes by the troubling news. They travel together. During that time, Spotlight goes to the two guys, and Paylor tells Usawa that there may yet be hope. And then we'll fill in an ominous ellipses after that. Uh, Book of Shadows. Uh, uh, oh, um, well, and this is this is an interesting. Uh, this is an interesting take, uh, Del Corn. I'm glad you mentioned that because Abigail is um, the Pact of the Tome. She has uh, this otherworldly Fey Pact as well. Now. Could that play into things? Maybe. That could even be while the two guys here are having a talk about uh, some sort of a forbidden book. Abigail sympathetically, you know, meanwhile, across the wagon, <laughs> Abigail and Ursula talk and she comes and says, I have a book that may be able to help you, but you may not like the cost. And, you know, so on and so forth from there. And so now we have, uh, you know, Dura is is the military liaison, so she's in the neutral position. Well, now we have two groups of two PCs doing the same thing but different. And maybe um, each of them arrive at a solution, though those solutions might clash or would have unintended consequences as these two types of magic. Right, you have this kind of like necromantic magic and fey, which is like if we think Feywild and Shadowfell, it's kind of two sides of the same coin, or it's like you know the good light side and dark side of the force. 
Well, she's fey packed and has this book. He's carrying around this, you know, I'm not going to call it the Book of Vile Darkness, but as the background states, people just shouldn't get their hands on this stuff. It's pretty gnarly. And so maybe um, as she's dying, Abigail does something through her packed magic to seal away. Ooh, 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 I like where this is going. Oh, good, 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 good. Abby meddles with Usu uses fey magic to seal her soul away even when her body dies. Paylor meddles <laughs> with uh, Usa <laughs> using uh, necromancy uh, spelling, using necromancy to um, we'll just say help him come to terms with death as neither fully know how to confront it. So she gets put into some kind of state and this would mean as a wizard when he finally gets those powers if he tries to do something like speak with dead or animate her he can't get in touch with her soul or her spirit. And so this could cause him in the future to feel, am I not doing this correctly? Am I failing? Or even worse, because mechanically, a spirit has to be willingly brought back from the dead. What if what if she's rejecting him? Because again, early on in, in, his, uh, in his transference here, he's discovering all this new stuff, and he has to go through the stages of regret. I mean, knowing some psychology and sociology as a DM is important. And so he's he's going through doubt and all this. Well, this is also why you know he buried his sister the way he did, um, and uh, and why he preserved you know this part of her in this way. Uh, sorry, I'm missing a lot of chat, boy. I I just got into a I this full head of steam storytelling because you guys are throwing out some cool stuff and it's it's clicking right. We're banging on all cylinders here. This is exactly what a storytelling session is about. It's energizing. It's it's great that we're coming together. Uh, oh, gamer! I'm, I'm, if you haven't left already, thank you for saying that. That it's interesting. I hope that you do come by again soon. Uh, work well, and I will I will see you back here. Um, if I missed you, uh, hey, uh, catch us on YouTube, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's like we're running a campaign without roles. We are. Yeah, uh, Dell, you got that absolutely correct. Oh, my. Oh, and hey, Shadzar, I didn't see you commented. Uh, no, he's really trying to ignore the fact uh, and let his sister die. She was always a drain on his life and was always holding him back. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if you're answering someone ahead or if you're just... Uh, uh, if you're throwing that out there as an alternative... Uh, an alternative mentality for him to take, uh, which, which could be true, Shadzar. Though, I think we went with the more empathetic route. Unless, hmm, we could almost do it as that's what he was always telling himself, and outwardly that was always the uh, the appearance, and maybe his coming to terms during this this time of transition was him realizing that he, he because he values strength, he always had to break his own rules for her. He always had to accommodate, and, you know, and, and um, he felt like he was babying her. But he couldn't just let her die, even though that's what nature would have wanted, and that's the cycle. And it, and if she would have died younger, she wouldn't have had to suffer through all this. So this is his ah oh, emotional conflict, internal turmoil, and ultimately why he's turning out to be a neutral character as a barbarian necromancer. So Paylor meddles uh, with Uso using necromancy, and then uh, at at this point in time, um, the sister passes away it's a very somber campaign or part of it or you know part of the mod it's very mellow everyone comes that you know the, the remainder of uh, the remaining people come back together and they say okay um you know this this has to end uh we're we're gonna go after uh we're gonna go after this this mid boss right who's been harassing us two or three times throughout the course of this half of the campaign you know level one through ten sister passes away Everyone rallies and uh, overcomes the mid-boss. 
as we approach the break. That could be a day, a week, a month, ten years. Uh, each must have a personal reckoning. This must show th the kind of growth that the characters undertook along the journey overland and in battle. So now we have all the characters on the stage and you're giving each of them five or ten minutes to say, this is how I've grown, this is what I've done. You can even have that rally before the mid-boss fight. And then from here, the players discuss what they're doing on break. We know that Usawa is going to take a hard break in order to study this tome. Maybe Paylor, for whatever reason, gave it to him. Um, maybe uh, maybe because uh, Paylor forgot it, right? And he's doing a bro a favor. Something along those lines. Because uh, he trusts Usawa uh, at this point, And maybe he no longer needs it. Or he's transcribed it or, or something. And so that could modify in his background. Um, so then Paylor's probably going to go back and he's going to return the artifact during this interim time. Do research. Kind of be a behind-the-scenes guy. So when he returns after the break, if he returns, right? Because whoever's playing Usula is going to have to come back in a different form. So when he comes back, he can provide, you know, he's a bit of the brain. He'll have some knowledge. Uh, in fact, he might have even heard of a certain sword that we talked about in the last session. And in order to overcome the evil that's still uh, over, that's taking over the land, uh, he can offer the second part of this quest. Dura could have grown in different ways and could be favoring Paladin, uh, Sorcerer, or even both, kind of weaving one and one at a time. Or if she if she's like no no more sorcerer you know as a player she's like no I'm gonna come back and be like a six six paladin three sorcerer or something. And Abigail is gonna go back and she sees uh, she sees these opportunities uh, to try and take over the world uh, just in a very benevolent and cute fashion, uh, as well as probably browbeat her brother a little bit. And in fact maybe this is a good chance for the person who played Ursula as the little sister to come back and roll as Abigail's brother and be the little brother. And so we still have the sibling team, but now we're exploring uh, the different dynamic that they share. And there we go. We have, it wasn't exactly a, a one through 10 adventure. So it was kind of like a, you know, a five to nine, but it was a solid story. It has combat, it has skill checks, it has traps and hazards. And it puts the spotlight on your different party members at different times and for different reasons. Not just because I have the highest int or I'm the perception monkey or I'm the arcane one, you know, something like that. <laughs> Seven on a d20, yeah. Uh, Perugia... I have a friend that was very there is no luck. However, after many a game, he tells people I defy science with my cursed luck with dice and dice alone. <laughs> oh man, that was a really invigorating story. Hopefully, does this uh, did that story like was it resonating with you all in chat? Were you following along? Did it seem like it made sense? Were you thinking of? art and scenes of combat and even like, ooh, I wonder if I could publish this on DM Guild and make a buck. Because maybe you can, I don't know. <laughs> this is our story. This isn't necessarily mine. Uh, I'm here to work with you all to unlock your brains and, to, and for you to unlock mine and get the creative juices flowing. We spent a whole week creating characters, now let's play with them, right? We, we got our action figures, you know, we got the... We got our, uh, our, our Bl uh, zesty blood orange diet coke in our you know our phone pew pew i got you no i didn't yeah i did blah 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 <laughs> now you got a two. Oh goodness <laughs> sorry perugia uh i don't think you're gonna make it <laughs> uh so delcorn i still don't like my sister <laughs> well you know what in that case uh you know, maybe you, uh, maybe if you were playing uh, Usula, you would have uh, liked your brother Usawa. 
Uh, but now coming around uh, in your instead of Usula, you're playing uh, your your brother character here. Uh, you get to explore that uh, that relationship in a whole different uh, <laughs> dynamic, you know, with puns or like passive aggressiveness or you know this sort of like constant need to one up each other. <laughs> uh, you remind me to never <laughs> take you to play craps with me. Oh gosh. Okay, well, you know what? We have earned ourselves a, a good break. I've talked a lot. I'm going to wet my whistle a little bit, maybe eat a little bit more salsa, too. Uh, and then uh, when we come back from break, we'll just have a normal you know, breakdown, Q&A. We'll just go over things, um, swap stories. If you want to go back into any, any of these characters and, and talk about things or explore things, we can do that, too. So hang tight, and I will be right back. Stretch, do whatever you need to do.